Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Scamfish presented by SocialCatfish.com. On today's episode, we revisit a woman named Lisa from Hi. Kentucky. How are you? Lisa has also been in an online relationship with a man named Bent since August of last year. She's also been in contact with a young man from Nigeria who scammed her out of over $20,000 using this man's pictures. Chris later revealed himself to Lisa and showed his true identity. Stages of my art room. If you're I'm just doing. now joining us, you might want to go watch last week's video. This episode probably won't make a whole lot of sense unless you've seen that episode. Chris was not going to come home, and he didn't come home when he said he was, and so I owed Bent two thousand dollars. So eight thousand. Plus the bet money, 2000 You can click this YouTube card, and I also put the link to part one in our bio of this video. Today, we will sit down with Lisa and tell her all the things we found out about this mysterious man, Bent. And Chris will also open up to us about how he scammed Lisa out of thousands of dollars. Let's jump into it. Real quick, guys. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Your comment and like could help stop someone from being scammed. Let's get into it. Hey, Brian. How you doing, David? Good. I'm doing great. Where are you from, by the way? Dallas. Okay. I hear the accent a little bit coming out. Where are you from, David? We're over in California. Yeah, your attitude of Californian. Oh, yeah. There <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah, I like it. Okay. Lisa's a firecracker. First of all, I want to let you know we've spent a lot of time on this for you. Thank you. We've dug into a lot of things. The goal with this is to walk away and really give you some closure with this. Yes. When we investigated all of the information that Lisa sent over to us, we started with Ben's email address. We weren't able to find any matches. What this means is we were not able to find any digital footprints leading back to this email being used by an actual person. If you sign up for social media sites or even opening a phone bill, the digital prints would show when searching an email. This is a big red flag, and it probably means you're talking to a scammer. Bent set Lisa up with a PI to help track down Chris. We were unable to find a license for this PI that charged Lisa a fee to start the investigation. This means either the PI was conducting investigations illegally, or he had never existed. We ran a reverse image search on the PI contract and found that it was downloaded from a website called Law Depot. The guy just basically took that same contract and threw his name on it and sent it over to Lisa. We kept digging to find more information. We decided to look into some names and addresses that Lisa sent money to on behalf of Ben. There's a gentleman by the name of Darius that you had actually sent money to. This was something that was really interesting to us because a lot of times we see money mules, they will meet you and they'll meet somebody else. You guys send money to each other and they unknowingly become a money mule. Well, in this situation, this is a young gentleman that has ties back to Nigeria, which is very interesting to us because typically somebody, if they're involved in a romance scam, you know, they are, you know, looking for love or they think they're in a relationship, you know, people 45 to 65 years old are typically fall within the demographic of people that are the main target because they have disposable income. In fact, it's something you should most likely go and contact authorities about because he's probably knowingly laundering money. So the next thing that we had looked into were all the phone numbers that you had sent over and there were multiple phone numbers. Two of the phone numbers Bent used to communicate with Lisa came back to Nigeria. We ran these phone numbers through a fraud scale. This tool is the same tool companies like Visa and MasterCard use to determine fraud. One of the numbers came back with a 44% fraud score. The other number came back as an 85% chance of fraud. This tells us that there is a very high chance that Bent is fake and not who he claims to be. And to be honest, it's sounding more and more like this guy's from Nigeria. They're trying to scam you and get rid of their competition, essentially. That's exactly what they're trying to do here. Chris told me Bent was a scammer. And he convinced me that Chris was scamming me. And now Chris is telling me that Bent's scamming me. They're trying to get rid of their competition. They hope you take one of their sides. And so they build your trust and then they take you down this wild ride to get more money saying, oh, I haven't eaten or I need money for this or whatever the case be, because you've, you have a history of giving money. They're trying to get more and more from you. 
So y'all know who this man is in the picture that I thought was Bent Rooney when we started talking. Well, that actually leads us into the image search itself, yeah. actually. So we had searched all of the images that you had sent. Every single one, none of them came back with any results. Does that mean he's deceased? Or what does it mean? So we do know some things about him. We know that there was a picture of a truck. That truck's from 2013. So that picture could be as old as nine years old. One of the pictures, it was a black and white picture of him that wore a hat that said Hayward. They are a pool supply company. So we did dig into it. The real person, he might be a pool contractor. He might work for a pool company or have some sort of association, but he was wearing that clothing with those logos. And so we were able to look into it to try to figure out who he is. Sometimes what happens is these people have their images stolen so often that they make their accounts private. So his accounts might have been private for the last four or five years. That's why we can't find anything. Or there's always a chance that they're deceased. They're no longer around. So he's not a mule. Because that's what I was thinking. He's using this man that's in the pictures. He's also using him as a mule. Because I say, Ben, He'd say, I'm taking my girls uh, to church this morning. I said, okay, I want you to uh, hold their hands and take a pic, you know, have somebody take a picture of the three of you. I want to see one girl on each side holding their hand. And he did, and he sent it to me. I think what, what needs to happen here, Lisa, is you have to detach yourself from the person in the image. The person in the image has nothing to do with this situation, this scenario at all. You know? You're right, I know. Yeah. Chris was doing the same thing. Chris came out to me. He came clean with me. He told me he got all the pictures off of Instagram. He told me the man's name. I went and I looked at it, and sure enough, every picture. But it helped me because I saw lots of video of this guy. He made lots of video. Do y'all know where Bent is? Brianne, you want to tell Lisa where the click came from? It came from a booha. A booha. I wonder, I think that might be where Chris is from. The, the way these scams work, they're an evolution of scams over time. And so what I mean by that is, you know, they have a playbook, a scammer's playbook, and they teach each other how this stuff works. And so sometimes they live in houses where they all scam people together. Sometimes, you know, they learn online on their own, but most of the time they're taught from somebody else. So some, like a friend taught them how to do it because they were making a bunch of money or there's a, a top boss that, you know, has a bunch of, you know, people under him that are scamming people. And so there are typically more than one person involved. There's usually somebody that's better with the conversational point. Because you've given money before, you have a big target on your back. And so they're literally either reselling you as their list. And by the way, they call you their client and you're the rich white lady from the United States. Why is Ben the, he's the same person that he was the very first time I ever talked to him? I only talked to one person. They do this every day, Lisa. You have to understand they're talking to 40 or 50 people at one time. He didn't have time to scam anybody else unless he never slept and never ate and never went to the bathroom and showered or anything. He talked to me all the time. The way they, they pay for things in Nigeria, they actually have to pay for internet access. They actually pay for bandwidth over there. And so they run out of bandwidth and they have to re-up on their, their internet bandwidth. And so if somebody's not able to eat, they're probably going to pay for food over their internet bandwidth. So if somebody's keeping the conversation going with you, it's either because they're getting money out of you or they're continuing to scam other people and they have the money to pay for their internet. Okay, that makes sense. A thousand dollars is more than enough to pay for an entire month, more than enough. If you make $10,000 a year in Nigeria, you are living the absolute the best lifestyle. I do have a compassion for people in Nigeria. I do, especially the kids that don't eat every day. I know that there's things that are happening over there that breaks my heart. I have about four of them that call me mom, and they don't eat every day. I'm kind of upset because you don't know who the person is in the picture, and you don't know who Bent Rooney is, and you don't know exactly the person the money's going to. I don't, I haven't really, I'm disappointed. Not every investigation ends up with us revealing the person in the image. We are limited to the public data that's available for someone. You know, there's privacy laws. You know, he's not being honest. And, you know, we do know that he's overseas in, uh, in Nigeria. 
We do know that the phone numbers being used um, have high fraud risk, right? We do know that the pictures that were sent to you are old, and we do know that the pictures are from somebody in uh, the United States. Most likely he was in California for a period of time. He's probably associated with the pool service, and the pictures could be as old as 2013. And yeah, I appreciate y'all giving me some more facts to back it up. I really do, but you know, for the rest of my life, I will always wonder who it really was I was talking to on that phone, who it really was that said those things to me, that knew things that made me really think that he knew what he was talking about. I would like to have some advice because the last time I talked to Ben, you know, what should I, should I just not Here's ever... my advice to you, Lisa. I think you are a good person with a very, very kind heart. I think you take your energy that you're spending talking to these people and you re relocate that energy to something local. You know, Brian and I both have a charity that we um, invest in every year and it's a big part of our lives. And I think that that would be really good for you to, um, you know, direct your energy toward because I think you can do more good and you can also see the good that you're doing through there yeah. versus overseas yeah. where you don't know if they're being honest with you. After speaking to Lisa, she told us that Chris wanted to tell us his side of the story. After last week's video release, Bent has been threatening him. Chris claims to be no longer scamming and wants to be forgiven for scamming Lisa. Let's hear what he has to say. What's up, Chris? How are you? I am not good. Why is that? I don't even know what to say because, <laughs> to be to be honest, I don't know what that guy Bent is capable of. If it is possible, you can see the the people that viewed the the video, people that watched the video. I think he watched it today, and he, he, he was calling me nonstop, texting me. So you're saying he saw the video and then reached out to you. How does he have your number? He started out to be a good person. Then I was using, you know, I was using a fake profile. I was living a bad life then. And I thought he was a real, real person. Like I'm talking to a real guy. Not even, I, don't, I did not think I was talking to a Nigerian. And he called me and told me he is a Nigerian. And he's trying to scam out too. And so I should just cooperate with him, do business with him. I trusted him to be like Nigerian to a Nigerian. It's not gonna. It's not going to do anything wrong behind me. So, I gave him my contact. I I even sent my pictures to him. I even gave him my address. All I have on him is just his phone number. That's all. The guy was like, I am not letting him make his money. They're gonna block his Facebook. I have told him to come clean, and that's the best way for him to just to just live a better life. Or, it's not going to complain, so I have to do what I did, and it is going to bounce back on me. What's his real name? He never told me that, so I don't know what he's capable of. He could reach me with his power. I don't know what he's capable of. That's just the truth. You know, when you reached out to her originally, you were trying to scam her. I don't get pe random people from Nigeria or anywhere else in the world that just randomly text me. I'm a pretty public person, right? Do you understand like what it looks like on our end where you know, you have young guys from Nigeria just randomly texting a, a white woman in the United States. Um, uh, yeah. I intimately understand like where you're coming from. I've talked to lots of people in your same situation. I truly have empathy toward like what you deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. I really truly want you to know that. The world you guys live in is different. Like it's just, it's a different type, part of the world. One question I have though, so Lisa has given you quite a bit of money, right? Um, it should be over 20,000, I guess. She still gives you money though. Last week, the last week, yeah. Last week she gave me $50. Like average person in Nigeria makes about $845 US, right? Yes. And so, I mean, if you got $20,000, we're talking almost three years worth of income that you got from her. Why are you still accepting money from her? I spend that money in the wrong way, yeah. I know I did. I bought a car and so the rest of it spent with friends, you know, as a young boy. So I blew you, everything. Everything. You blew every penny. Two, three years worth of income you blew? I blew everything. Lisa had sent a picture of you wearing a shirt 
and like yeah i mean basically the shirt it said master it said like god you know gave you this what was that about walk me through that was that your friends like touting her yeah that is what every student does when you graduate from a university and it's a common thing in nigeria every grad graduant we put on a white shirt and we buy a marker and you start signing it's called sign out we sign out help me understand why are you wanting to do this video because I feel guilty for what I did and I truly want to show repentance and I did not know, even if I could walk, if I can walk and pay back every penny I ever collected from that woman. When you had gotten money from her, she had sent money to other people. Can you walk me through like when you met her, how you found her profile, what the conversation was like on your end? The way I met her is kind of strange. I bought a phone, a used phone. You know, someone used the phone, tries to sell it, so I bought it. A stranger. So I bought it at a cheaper price. And when I was trying to operate the phone, I started, I started looking up numbers. I did not know how I ended up seeing the numbers. Maybe did not delete them. I don't know. I started texting some of the numbers. Okay, let me text. Let me text. This seems to be an American number. I started texting, and she was unfortunate then to be one of those that replied me and I just took the opportunity. The guy I used this picture, the guy I did not really know his name on Instagram, his picture is so easy to use. He has almost every picture explainable, explainable for everything she asked me. So she's going to say, send me this. I'll send her. Send me a picture of you with a toothbrush in your mouth. He did not actually have a toothbrush. He was lying down. So I had a guy who did a toothbrush in his mouth. There's a guy that does that. That's what it's all it does. Photoshop, Photoshop, and the guy Photoshop the, the toothbrush in her mouth, and she she believed it. That was when the trust started coming in. Oh, I won't get in trouble. That's why are you gonna get in trouble? I scammed someone. Are you still scamming? No. How are you making money now? I don't make nothing. You're not working or anything. I quit my job in a bakery when Ben was threatening me. I had to, to leave the bakery and I had to, to, to run back to the school to stay in the school hostel. And the school is on strike right now. I am literally staying with few of friends in the school. So we just struggle. We want to hear from you guys. Did Chris sound sincere about everything he's done in the past? Drop a comment below. I've been asked to start teaching. Um, elementary students in Bible study. So I'll start that. That's one of the Nigerian kids right now. That's Chris. Um, anyway, I'm going to start teaching. And then hopefully there's some things I need to take care of for as far as my health that I put on hold for a long time. And since I won't be giving the rest of my two cents to kids, I'll take that two cents and try to get these surgeries taken care of so I can go back to teaching art and making a living because I've given my money away, I can't. My husband gave me enough money to live off the rest of my life, but I used it unwisely. And I'm not gonna do that anymore. How do you feel about the information that we've been, we've been able to provide to you? I kind of knew all that, to be honest. Okay. I've been, I've gone, yeah, I kind of knew all that. I knew those numbers were used by others. And I really am trying to think of anything I mean, yeah, I do know for sure that Vince's not real, but and I didn't know that, but I still don't know who that was. I've been talking to on the phone. And if you've never been in a relationship like that, you don't know how it's like. Um, just to completely have that voice in your head all the time. You know what I'm saying? I I'll always hear his voice. And I didn't get a closure, not the kind I thought I would get. Thanks for watching another episode of Scamfish presented by socialcatfish.com. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. See you next time. Scams come in so many different forms. If you have been a victim of any of the scams below, please email us at sharemystory at socialcatfish.com. We'll get to the bottom of it with help from our Social Catfish team. 
By sharing your story with our YouTube audience, we can educate, spread awareness, and maybe someday we can put an end to these scams.